In this video, I'll be doing the maths question you see on the screen here from paper two of the 2024 Maths Leave Insert exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the playlist in the comments below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, you're not in a classroom here, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, watch a half speed or watch a 2x speed. If you do find these videos useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like or subscribe, but especially I'd appreciate you sharing it with a friend doing the Leave Insert or doing it next year. In question eight, they tell us about a cylinder. Uh, I think it's made of metal. Yeah, metal. Or They say something about metal or glass. I'm guessing metal because this cylinder, they unwrap it to look like this. There's no top, there's no bottom. So you can think you can cut it there and roll it all out so it looks like this. And they ask us, what are the dimensions here? How wide and how high? They do tell us the height of this guy is 15 and uh, the radius, is it? Yeah, okay, the radius is five. So what's the dimensions here? First of all, hopefully it's easy to see. Remember, we're cutting here and here, like we're cutting down there and unrolling it all out. So this height is still 15. This length here though, is actually the length around here. So if we change that down to this, that's five. It's just the perimeter of a circle. So that's a two, uh, well, let me write down here, two pi or is the perimeter of a circle. And we know or, it's two pi times five in this case, which is 10 pi, which um, is pi is 3.14, something uh, one two or something so uh, multiply that by 10 we would get 31.4 which I guess we would have to double check uh, the next decimal place it looks like I've checked it there and um, so 31.4 is the dimensions here okay and um, let's uh, let's clear this off and do part B right in part B this is a great question by the way it's a really really difficult brain teaser. So I'm sure a few people had trouble with this. Um, in this question, you have a cylinder and that's inside a sphere, which I cannot even begin to draw. So it looks good. Actually, the drawing they do doesn't look that good, but it's a cylinder, can a Coke think of it, inside a ball. It's, think of it, it's inside a ball that perfectly touches every side here. So my drawing, not so much. Um, and they give us some numbers. They tell us uh, the cylinder height is 22 and the diameter not the radius now the diameter so from here to here is 12. and what is it they ask us the, the cylinder fits perfectly inside all the tops and bottoms touch find the volume of the sphere so really all we need to find the volume of a sphere is the formula is 4 over 3 pi or cubed all we need to know is or so how do we find or? Like a lot of people might guess, oh, it's half of 22, it's 11. But that's not quite right. If, yeah, I better draw this a little. Yeah, let's, uh, instead of three dimensions, let's just draw it looking right straight in. Looks like that. The height here is 22. So that's not the height of the whole circle. So that's not the radius. But now drawing it this way is how you should do it. Think of slicing this guy down the middle um, slicing the ball, the can, everything down the middle, you would get something that looks like this. And what's great here is this touches on these corners. The center of the sphere is here somewhere. And we're looking for this number or. But we know this height is 22. We know this uh, length across here is 12. So that means half of that is 6, half of that is 11. So we can actually zoom in on that little triangle there. We get six, 11, and we're looking for or. And they even give us a clue of that in the question. They say, use uh, the theorem of Pythagoras in your solution. And that's what we need here. Or squared is equal to six squared plus 11 squared, which is equal to um, 157. Or or is equal to square root of 157. Oh, sorry, that's not the final answer. Final answer is volume is equal four over three pi, um, let's see, 157 to the power of 
3 over 2 uh, hope, hopefully that hasn't confused people uh, square root is 1 over 2 and to the power of 3 is uh, now 3 over 2 put all that in the calculator and you'll get uh, 8240.2 yeah they asked us to yeah round it off to one decimal place Okay, I thought that was a tricky question. You had to realize to cut this in half, which is actually interesting because in part C, yeah, the next part, they actually they do give a similar looking question and they cut it in half for you. So if you weren't able to do part B, maybe when you did part C, you would have got a clue and come back. Anyway, let me clear this and we'll do part C. Okay, in part C, we have a cone here with a cone underneath it. And once again, this is all inside a sphere. And healthily this time, they, they draw a picture of it after cutting it open. Let me do it down here, make it a good bit bigger. Um, the bottom of this cone, here's the top cone here. And that's uh, we call A, B, and C. And the bottom cone will be A, B, and D. And they also tell us this is nice and symmetrical down the middle. And the center point here is E. Uh, they give us a wall of uh, words there, uh, but basically they're just describing uh, this picture and what we've described of two cones on top of each other. So let's jump into the actual question. Um, one, or uh, this is C, I think, or is it D? I think it's C, C part one. And they ask, the diagram is symmetrical about DC. So around this line, it's symmetrical. It can fold over on itself. Um, state Y, C, C, B, D, this angle in here is 90 degrees. Why is that 90 degrees? Well, if this can fold over itself, that means the right side is half of a circle. That's a full circle. That's half of a circle. C, B, D is inside a semicircle. And that, that's all that you want me to tell them. Just say, in fact, the answer to this question could be inside a semicircle. That's full marks. Or drawing this picture is probably okay as well, because um, that's all it is. It's a right uh, anything any line anything inside a semicircle like this is a right angle. So that's the answer to part uh, one. Part two. Hence or otherwise, prove that the triangle BCE BCE this one on top is similar to BED or whatever letters they say. This one underneath, not, not identical, not congruent. Uh, just similar. That means all the angles are the same. The lengths are different, but all the angles are the same. So how do we go about doing that? Um, let me draw it again. Well, here, let's use up here. Here's the upper triangle and the bottom triangle. And then let's draw them separately as well. There's the upper one and let's give it a bit of separation just to help us out here. Here's the bottom one. Now, straight away, we know that's a right angle and that's a right angle. These two here, these are right angles. That's one. And remember, all we're doing here to prove that these are um, are similar is getting all the angles to be the same. That's all we need to do here. So that's uh, that's job one. So let's start labeling some of them. Um, this angle up here, let's call it A. That, that'll be A here. And um, the first thing I would notice, if I call this one down here B, this one down here B, First thing I would notice is this was a right angle, remember? So A plus B must equal, A plus B must equal 90. So that's one thing I would note. Now what about this angle in here? I, let's call it uh, uh, C for the moment. What do we know about C? We know 180 equals A plus 90 plus C. So what's C equal to? C is equal to, uh, that'd be 90, 90 minus A. But let's have a look back up here. What was B equal to? 90 minus A. So C equals uh, B. This guy in here, I didn't have to write C. I can just go ahead and write B. That one equals that one. Um, and we can do the same logic down here. The angle in here must be, um, again, let's call it D for the moment. D must equal 90 minus B, 90 minus B, or 180 minus 90 minus B, if you'd rather. 
So D equals 90 minus B, but from up here, once again, I would get A. A equals 90 minus B minus B. So D equals A, or that equals A in here. And if, if we rotate this and draw them beside each other, we get 90 A, B, you don't have to do that by the way. And that's it, you're finished. You've, you've shown all these angles. Uh, these are three angles, this is the three same angles. So they must be uh, similar. Hopefully you could see all that because it's, it's absolutely lashing outside and it's got very dark. Okay, I uh, rubbed off a little bit of this, so that's if that changed on your screen. Apologies for that. Um, so part three, uh, they ask us, uh, they ask us to get this equation. Um, what is it here? R squared equals twenty h minus h squared. And to get that, they tell us a few things. They tell us the top of the cone. This top cone up here. This top one up here has a height of h. The height in there is h, and has a radius of r. So that'd be E to B here, is R. And um, the sphere, um, this sphere that goes around it, it has a radius of, of 10. So we don't really have a center for that somewhere here. That's a radius is 10. Use all that information to get this. Right, how do we do that? Remember that this triangle on top, let me draw it again. This triangle now, H or, is similar to this triangle underneath. And again, I'll draw them beside each other. I'll rotate this and put it over here. The height's or. And um, these are similar triangles. That means that H divided by or, or this length divided by this length is equal to this length divided by that. That would get us an equals with H's and or's. That's where we need to go. Except the only problem is, I don't know the length here. I don't know this length ED, but, but I sort of do. Uh, if we draw that lot straight line again, that's 20. It's the radius, it's the diameter of a circle. And that's H up here. So down here is just 20 minus H. This guy in here, remember I rotated it just to make it look uh, similar. So we can use the fact that these are similar triangles that we proved in the last part. Being a similar triangle means that H divided by R, this height divided by its corresponding side, this angle equal this angle. So this side must be something related to this side in the same way these two are related. So that divided by that, that divided by that. R over 20 minus H. So we know this because they're similar. That's where I got the equation. And this should rearrange straight into this. And uh, let's see, they went to R squared. Uh, we get R squared by multiplying across by R. <coughs> and that over there, we should, that should pretty much do it. That'd be R squared equals uh, 20 or 20 H minus H squared, which that's just, just change, the, change the direction and that's, that's your finish. Okay, they still want a part four. What's part four? It is to find the volume. Or, uh, sorry, hence write the volume of the top cone, okay, just the top cone, in terms of h and pi. Well, the volume of the top cone is one third uh, pi or h. But that's not what they asked for. They asked for h and pi. They want this or gone. Um, and that's not too bad, sorry, or squared should be here. They want these this or squared gone. That's not too bad because we have we know what R squared is here. So when they ask us to write the volume in terms of just pi and h, I can write it out again. Pi, instead of R squared, I just put in 20 h minus h squared times another h. That's the volume. You can, you can multiply this in. In fact, let's do it because we have to, yeah, we have to differentiate next. I'll have to clear off a bit of space. A half pi 20 h squared minus h cubed is the volume. Now next they ask us to find the maximum volume. So we think maximum or minimum, we, sh we gotta be thinking differentiation. So let me clear it off here and we'll do it over there. But just to be clear, they said the maximum uh, volume when you change H. So that means the change in the volume with respect to H. So dV dH, and we can do that down here. That's uh, two different sums. Sorry, I missed a bracket there. 
Uh, the one, the half pi is just a constant, so we can leave that alone. Um, differentiate 20 h squared becomes 40 h. Um, differentiate minus h cubed becomes minus 3 h squared. And at a maximum, we know this equals zero. We know this equals zero. So what we do, we can uh, divide both sides by pi over two. That'll get rid of it on the left. On, that'll get rid of it on one side. Yeah, let, let, assume I wrote this out equals zero here. On this side, I'll get rid of it and leave uh, 40 h minus three h squared. And zero divided by pi over two is still zero. Um, we can factorize this, we can take h out of both, that's 40 minus 3h equals 0. This is just a factorized question, how do we get 0 with two things multiplying? Well the answer is either this one equals 0 or this one equals uh, 0. This one we can clean up and get h equals 40 over 3. Um, now, they didn't ask for multiple answers. We've got two answers for h here. Uh, they wanted the maximum volume. Well, when h equals zero of a, uh, of a cone, when the height is zero, the volume is nothing. It's just flat. So that's definitely not the answer. That's the minimum, in fact. And so that's the answer there for uh, find the value of h at the maximum. So that's the value there. You don't, ha you don't actually have to find the volume, just that. Okay, that's it for question eight. If there was any mistakes or you have any follow-up questions, uh, just let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.